The next speaker is the national coordinator of the network of people who use drugs in Indonesia and an activist for drug users' rights, Edo Agustian. Hey, Edo. Thank you, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm deeply honored for the opportunity to stand here and address you today. Yes. I came from Indonesia, a country known best in North America for killing drug users in cold blood, and most recently for recruiting piranhas and crocodiles to guard a pro proposed prison for drug offenders located on a remote island. With over 250 million people, Indonesia is the fourth largest country in the world and the world's largest Muslim country. The challenges we face in terms of drug policy are similar across all of us Asia. There is a punitive war on drugs raging across most of my region, but Asia is far behind in terms of drug policy reform advocacy. Governments in Asia are a lot less open and far less inclusive or responsive of civil society in the decision-making process. In fact, civil society and community voices are often cook and silence. Our president declared a new war on drugs early last year. In the last eight months, my community has experienced serious human rights violations including forced treatment and detention, disclosure of personal information and medical records, extortion, abuse, including, including women's sexual, sexual abuse by the police. In 2015 alone, Indonesia executed 14 people on drug-related offenses and has planned to ex execute more next year. So why I, I do continue to fight a battle that seems impossible, why I do continue to advocate on behalf of the drug user community. I became an activist just, I'm really young in this, in 2007, after I was shot by the police. Back then, I was a drug user on the streets on my hometown. One night, two police officers chased me arrest me, bring me to the cemetery yard, and torture me, and finally shot me in the leg from behind, direct in front of my face. Then they dragged me to a, the, the, the deserted area, hung me upside and down. They tortured and beat me so that it would provide information about my drug dealer. After leaving me there to die, they exposed my personal details on the media. That experience changed my whole life. I became tired of seeing and experiencing injustice and ready to fight to be treated equally to other citizens. I became tired of seeing all of my friends in prison for minor position charge, which ruined their life and those of their families. I became tired of seeing my community be systematically excluded from basic healthcare. My outrage and my anger become more powerful than my fear. Today, I continue to advocate because these issues are still with us. Drug users in Indonesia and other all over the world continue to have their basic rights violated, continue to be put in prison or mandatory treatment and they continue to be systematically excluded from national insurance scheme in Indonesia. I'm extremely inspired to have connected with such inspiring activists at this conference. It is clear to me that the movement to end the war on drugs is growing stronger, larger, and more resilient every year. But we must make this a global movement. While we continue to fight our smaller battle, battles, we must 
unite our voice so that no country or region is left outside of the, the movement. We must learn from each other, strategize together, and advocate together. The best time in our life are the moments when we realize and put to use the freedom that we didn't know we had. Thank you.